Hi everyone, welcome back. You're still with us here on the Sea Morning Show and we are fast approaching the final hour of our program which is leading us into our second discussion. Uh, something insightful and something mm -hmm. important for all of you to know. Uh, our second discussion is about autoimmunity. Yes, it's, it's, we hear it a lot mm -hmm. these days, autoimmunity. And according to the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, more than 80 diseases occur as a result of the immune system attacking the body's organs and cells. And while the list of autoimmune diseases could be quite long, some of them are more well-known than others. For example, type 1 diabetes, mm. arteritis temporalis, or the inflammation of the body vessels, and systemic lupus erythematosus, or SLE. So, joining us today to share her insights and knowledge on autoimmunity is rheumatology consultant, Dr. Sandra Cynthia Langau. Good morning, Doc. Thank you so much for coming good here. Good morning. Hi, good morning, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. So, explain to us, what is autoimmunity? What happened to our body when that happened? Okay, first of all, thanks for having me here. So, if you want to talk about autoimmune disease, the first one we must understand what is immune system. Yes. And how does it work? Mm. So, we have a very good system, we call it immune system. Uh, this system is uh, meant to protect us against foreigners uh, and fighter foreigners like uh, such as bacteria or virus or parasites and also the cancer cell. Mm. But the different story uh, with autoimmune disease uh, so, uh, I can tell you with the short story. Yeah. So, uh, for example, that uh, if we want to say that our body is a castle and the immune system is the army, right. but sometimes the army doing something wrong, attacking the castle, not protecting it. Right. And, and this caused the inflammation, lead uh, to the inflammation, and the disease happened that we call the autoimmune disease. Wow, and when you talk about autoimmune disease, Doc, what are these autoimmune diseases? What are they? Okay, uh, we have some list of autoimmune diseases. Uh, and we can classify it into several classification. Uh, one of uh, based on the location where the autoimmune attack. Yeah. There are two. Uh, the first one is a systemic autoimmune disease. The autoantigen can be found in all types of the cell in our body. Right. Uh, and the, consequently, the pathological damage can be happen in any organ. Right. Yeah. For example, the, the systemic lupus erythematosus that you have mentioned yeah, what before. Is that? Yeah, this what is, does it attack? Yeah. Okay. It can affect any organ in your body. Right. Yeah. Like uh, skin, joint, and also the internal organ, such as brain, also kidney, lung, heart. So any organ in your body. Everything's a fair play. Yeah. Could be mild, but sometimes it's life threatening. Wow. So we've heard of this because we have friends and I'm sure family members with autoimmune, and yeah. it's always like, oh, my autoimmune is acting up again, or mm. it's something is causing something to happen in their body. So let's talk about that a little bit. We spoke a bit uh, before we came on to the discussion, and it's surprising to me that this can you don't have to be born with it. So what causes it exactly? Okay, the short answer that we don't know exactly what the cause of autoimmune disease. The process cost, we don't know, but from some investigators, scientists uh, believe that the gene play an important role in developing autoimmune disease. Okay. But there is no single gene and the gene only cannot cause the autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease is the result of the interaction between the gene and also the environmental factor. Okay. okay. When you ask what's, what kind of environmental factor that can trigger the autoimmune response, Actually, we don't know, wow. but... So anybody can get autoimmune disease then, though? Yes, yes. Uh, autoimmune disease can affect uh, everybody, any, anyone, and regardless age and also gender. Regardless of age? Yes. Even, even children can, can potentially get autoimmune? Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Baby also. Babies also? Yes. Scary, right? That is very scary. And we would like to... We also have some, um, some sound bites, actually. I mean, some some statements from, from those who have uh, who have autoimmune disease. So let's let's listen to what they have to say. Maria and um, I'm sharing a little bit about living with an autoimmune disorder. So in 2012, I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder called, called SLE. Hi, I'm Ina and I was diagnosed with two types of uh, autoimmune disease, Bechet and polymyositis. 
and for me it's in particular arthritis on my um, joints and I've had um, issues, a little bit issues with kidney function on the way and um, one of my biggest flares was I was hospitalized in 2013 for a whole month, almost a whole month. Uh, I couldn't walk and um, that's when I realized how much autoimmune disorders can affect your life. Obviously, uh, it affects on my daily activities. Um, people with uh, autoimmune disease, uh, like me, um, Bechet syndrome and polymyositis, I can't be directly exposed to sunlight. And um, you know, when it relapses, um, I have thrust all over my mouth, not only one, lot and then as well as my in my uh, genitals area so I cannot eat I cannot pee and then uh, not to mention the rust and skin uh, skin rust um, all over your feet and also your hand and sometimes also uh, effects on your visions getting blurred but how I manage these days is um, it's very challenging to be in the right mindset to be able to manage your feelings, your emotions because according to a lot of doctors and experts, um, just a little bit of any kind of trigger, whether it's you're too excited, too sad, um, too hot, too angry, too whatever, too much of something is definitely not a good thing for somebody who has an autoimmune disorder. So uh, how I manage it is healthily to be able to make friends with my autoimmune disorder and accept the fact that it is going to be part of my life for the rest of my life. There is no cure for it. I just have to prepare myself like the meds, of course the meds. Um, the vitamin D is a must, uh, it's a must and then um, I have to maintain my stressful level. I, I cannot be too tired um, and the most of we have to know, we have to know do and don'ts like that. And then the last, you have to be happy all over the time, which is, is hard to do it. <laughs> so obviously those are our colleagues as well here at yeah. Today. Yeah. Uh, we are aware that they have this condition, but um, what's surprising is from both of them, you heard different symptoms completely. Yeah. Um, and I've heard this from other people as well, that symptoms can range and be quite very... So, for us to know that this can happen to anyone, how do we detect it? Is this something, because Kai was diagnosed in 2012, I haven't got a chance to ask her how she got diagnosed, yeah. but how do we know or sh is this something we should check regularly? Okay, um, so before uh, getting the diagnosis of autoimmune disease, usually we always heard the story of the autoimmune warrior. They always say like that um, they have to wait two years or more than two years and also they should visit a number of doctors and get the multiple diagnosis before the definite diagnosis. Right. Yeah, yeah, because sometimes it's, it is difficult for us to make a diagnosis of autoimmune disease right. because they share the same clinical sign and symptom with the other diseases. Other things, yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. But uh, probably I can tell you that you, if, if you haven't been healthy before and then uh, suddenly you feel like uh, joint pain, joint, swell, joint swelling, and also the skin rest or patchy scaling on the skin, fatigue or abdominal pain, bloody diarrhea, something like this. The new symptom, you should see the doctor first and the doctor will look closer to your symptom and probably run some tests mm. to exclude the autoimmune disease or to identify it. Okay, okay. I see. So. So as our friends uh, Kai and Inna mentioned earlier that, you know, this is something that we're going to live for the rest of our lives, so might as well just make friends with uh, my condition. So how do you manage it? How do you manage autoimmune disease so that it doesn't, you know, like the warriors or the soldiers don't come and attack you, your body, your castle, right? So uh, we know that uh, autoimmune disease is, uh, we cannot cure it, but it is manageable and treatable. So based on diagnosis and also the severity of the symptom, we will uh, treat the patient with autoimmune disease. We use some medication like anti-inflammatory drugs. This is like forever. Yeah. You have to take it forever, or just when it when yeah it's acting up. We will take it uh, for some a long time. Then based on the condition, we will reduce the dose. 
but actually uh, we they should consume some immunosuppressive drug mm -hmm. yeah to maintain the immune system mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's to and keep the sh soldiers in check, basically, so they're not like trying to attack. They don't get yeah. crazy. Aggressive. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So both of uh, our colleagues also in the past year alone had babies. Um, they were both yeah. pregnant, and throughout Kai's, because I, I see Kai more often, throughout her pregnancy, there were times where it was difficult for her, and she would explain to me, this is my autoimmune. I didn't understand it at the time as well, but there were trips, more frequent trips to the hospital or to the doctor in order, and I guess there were different things happening to her at different times. How does this, can it affect fertility? Because obviously they're both um, fine, and uh, I, you know, I see Kai's baby a lot, and uh -huh. baby's fine as well. So can it affect fertility, or is it just the process of pregnancy that can be affected? Okay, uh, in some autoimmune disease, we can see that uh, the fertility doesn't appear to be altered by the disease it itself. Okay. Especially if, if the patient in the stable condition, but there are one of uh, autoimmune disease we call the antiphospholipid syndrome. Mm -hmm. It can cause the blood clot in the vein, inside the vein, and also the arteries and also the internal organ. That's uh, dangerous. Yeah, though. this this kind of disease can cause uh, like a miscarriage or stillbirth in the baby. Right. right. But the good news is that most uh, patients with autoimmune disease can have a successful pregnancy. Right. Oh. But you should prepare it with your doctor. Right. So the preventive for like blood clotting would be maybe blood thinners. Yeah. Because you know, whenever that's yes. happen. Wow. So yeah, I remember as well that. It was something that had to be monitored a lot much more much more than uh, a person without autoimmune yeah. uh, having a pregnancy. Indeed. Can it be prevented, doctor? I mean, since <clears throat> this is not hereditary, it's, it's not, you know, it's not from our, our, our parents or our grandparents or our ancestors. So can we prevent it and how do we prevent getting autoimmunity? So uh, it, it is difficult to answer because we don't know exactly what the cause of autoimmune disease and sometimes we can say that it's impossible for us to prevent it. But from some epidemiologic studies, uh, scientists believe that with a healthy lifestyle, we can decrease our risk of getting autoimmune disease. Yes. And when you talk about healthy yeah. lifestyle, that yes. would be... Like, um, regularly exercise, exercise right. regularly, consistently, and then eat healthy food, yeah, yeah such as uh, probably the Mediterranean diet. Mediterranean it's a, diet. It's a good, mm. it's a good... Uh, That's the food. one where it kind of, you have a wide variety of healthy food, Lentils, right? chickpeas, yeah. Yeah. hummus, and yes. all that. Basically, pretty plant-based, actually. Yeah, pretty plant-based, and the uh, fish and olive oil. Fish and olive oil. Yes. Well, that part I think you've got covered as well. Oh yes, I, that's pretty much my diet. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just, I think we know what a uh, healthy lifestyle entails. Yeah. I don't think, you know, a lot of times we're like, oh, how do we live a healthy, we all know what's unhealthy. Just avoid <laughs> the unhealthy stuff. Just don't eat processed foods. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If you have to, just do it once a month. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, anything else that you think that we should know about autoimmune disease, just as general mm. knowledge? Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, probably uh, sometimes patients with autoimmune disease is uh, very sad when they get the first diagnosis. Okay. Oh, but yes, we know that uh, autoimmune disease cannot curable but manageable. Mm -hmm. And we can use some medication right now uh, to prevent the organ damage. Okay. Yes. Yeah, as early as possible, you get the diagnosis, we will give you a treatment. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be worried. Yeah. And yeah. then. Uh, if you take your medicine, regular follow up your, with your doctor, you you can have a very good life, yes. like everyone in the street. Yes. So you don't have to be worried. That's uh, great to know. I can, yeah. For example, Kai, I refer keep referring back to her because I've seen the incidences with her where sometimes she even has to take a few days off from work yes. just to get your body rested because if you're overworking, you get overtired. Yes. Can it, by the way, reduce life expectancy if you're treated properly? Like if you recognize that you have it and you treat it properly, can you still lead a full life? Yes. As somebody without it? Yes, of course. Uh, the prognosis uh, depends on the how fast we get the diagnosis ah. and get the proper treatment and also the regular follow-up. 
Okay, early yeah. detection, always. Yes, yeah, save Absolutely. lives. Absolutely, and also rest and have a healthy lifestyle. Yes. Resting, I mean, it's like, I think people over... Nobody like, ever thinks about it. You always think about exactly. exercise and food, but you never no, think no, about no, resting. Sleeping. But rest and recovery is, to me, number one. It it's is very, number one. I mean, it's like, if I only get like four hours of sleep, <laughs> I get cranky. So sometimes like, Paul, don't talk That's a sign. Exactly. <laughs> your body's telling you Exactly. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, oh, Dr. Thank Sandra. You. Thank you. We have a better understanding of autoimmunity now. Well, uh, hopefully it will inspire you to take care of yourself. Uh, and your family and your loved ones better as well. All right, we're going to take a break. Paul? Yes, we'll be right back in case you're just joining us or joined us late. We'll recap some of our earlier stories when we return.